Subclips are shorter virtual versions of actual media. But did you know that you can actually pre-edit before it's even brought into DaVinci Resolve in the media storage panel like this? Make sure you're on the media page, go up to media storage on there, and then find the clip. It's basically like a file browser when you're in media storage to find a segment that you want to bring in and restrict it to just the in and out mark. So we're going to mark an I for in, go to the part we want to mark out, O for out, and drag this into your bin. It gives you a new window called new subclip. And I don't even use full clip extents because you can change this later on. Now that this is brought into our project in a bin, you have this restricted so you're not wasting time scrubbing through a bunch of junk that you don't need to see. It's really helpful if you have lots of drone footage or GoPro footage because those clips tend to run on like forever. Today I have three more power tips to show you how you can use subclips in ways that you may have never realized was even a thing. Subclips for subsequences. Have you ever edited a longer video? Like this one right here is uh, a minute and a half, but it needs to be under one minute for some social posting. This is perfect for that. Over in the edit page, make sure you have both your source viewer and your timeline viewer visible. If you don't, go up to the upper right and close your inspector down. You should have both viewers there. And the way this works is they actually load a timeline into the source. So this is a timeline file. This is my one and a half minute sequence. I'm gonna drag this into the source viewer Click and drag this over here. And now you've basically loaded a timeline into the source. And to get this down to one minute, you could just mark an endpoint wherever you want this to start. Let's say we want to start there and then just move later in time to make a shorter version of it. Hit O for out. And you could drag this over into your bin to make the subsequence or the subclip, or you could right click in this area down here, create subclip as well as there's the shortcut option B. Now you know all the ways. Let's rename this one to social and it created it right in the bin that was already pre-selected. And now you can see we have a much shorter version. It's, uh, what is it, about 40 seconds, but it contains all those edits, so you can then go in and resize it for vertical, whatever you need to do. But it's a great way to make a shorter version of a long sequence into a shorter one by creating a subclip or subsequence. How about subclips for fusion comps? Let me show you a problem that I have run into when I'm trying to combine different elements. We've got Yosemite and some clouds. I was gonna do a sky replacement. Well, you pre-edit these on your timeline. You get your in and outs marked exactly how you want. You select them both. You right click and you say, uh, create a new fusion clip up here. And that basically creates like a compound nested sort of clip that you can open in fusion and start working right away. But the problem that I have with it is that it bakes everything down. We see this 1920 by 1080. It bakes all your elements to whatever your timeline resolution is when you make the fusion clip. And the other problem I have with fusion clips is if you take a look at this here, our time codes got blown away. It's all at zero, zero, zero. So that makes it really difficult if you go into a commercial finishing workflow where you actually need all the time code data. So here's how subclips for fusion comps actually works and how I've been using it. To get a subclip created from the timeline, you select the clip and then you match frame. It's this button that's right over here, or you could hit F on the keyboard as well. And that would basically takes your in and out marks from the timeline. It sets them up here as well, okay? They are the exact same from your timeline. And to create the subclip, I just drag to my bin and it creates a, a clip that says subclip on it, which is really handy. And it has like a little different icon over here. Now we need to get this back onto our timeline. How do I do that? Easiest thing is because this is already selected and make sure your, your tracks are patched where you want them to go. I want this to go back to V1 is a replace edit. The replace edit doesn't require you to mark any in and out points. It's just gonna match up where the two playheads are at. So I'm gonna drag from here over to this right area. We have this replace edit window available. Click replace and you can see we have replaced uh, that clip down there in the timeline. We also wanna pre-edit the clouds layer and we just need a subclip to do that as well. I'll select it. This time I'll hit F. That loads it over here. Drag this over to our, uh, our bin area and hit create. Now these two are different resolutions, so you'll deal with that later, but I've got all of the original pixel data of this these two source clips. This cloud one here, if I go to the inspector, you can see is 4096 by 2160. And the um, Yosemite subclip that I had made is 3840 by 2160. The trick to the, that makes this easy to work with is this next thing I wanna show you, which let me select something else over here in the media pool, and that's find in media pool. So if you select a clip, right click, 
there is this command down here called find in media pool. If you hit this, it takes you to find that clip in your media pool anywhere in the project. This is really handy because that option F also works when you want to find something that's in a node flow over in Fusion. So let's go to Fusion and I'll show you how to stack these up and start to build your Fusion comp. It's good to note here, I actually don't need this top clip on here. I'm going to just hit D to disable it because all of our Fusion comp is going to be built off of this main plate down here with this uh, three hour time code. And I'm going to open this in Fusion. Now, because there's another clip on top, I do need to right click and say open in Fusion page. We have all 3840 by 2160 pixels available. That's great. I want to use all of those. So now you just pull in the subclip of the clouds plate that we had created, the subclip version. And that's because these durations are going to match exactly. So we can see we've got this cloud subclip. I'll just drag that down here. We have this available at its full resolution as well. So then you can just comp these two together, merge them however you need to, move them around. Um, and then when you go back to the edit page, after you've done all your work, you can see we have worked with the full resolution clips and we still have that source time code on this Fusion Comp based off of a subclip. Oh, and the other thing that's great about this workflow is because you've kept your time code, you can go to the deliver page to create a render of it using individual clips and keep all the metadata time code that someone that maybe isn't as cool as us and isn't using Resolve can still use in their app of choice. Hey, quick time out. I want to welcome you if it's your first time here to Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve master trainer, but I just love teaching all the cool stuff that you can do over here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's not waste any more time and get to tip number four about text-based editing. So if you're unaware, DaVinci Resolve can actually automatically transcribe your audio over here just in the background. All you need to do is select your clip and then go up in the upper left here and there's this button. It's called Transcribe Audio. Hit it. And then the DaVinci Resolve Neural Engine goes in, it listens to everything, and it turns it basically into a Google Doc that you can select things that actually makes in and out marks. And when you have in and out marks, you can make subclips. So we have our long interview of text. What if I just want to find the part where I know he talked about using Fusion 360 to build his robot? I just find it right there. You can put your cursor that basically sets the playhead. You could listen to it. So to when I start building a robot, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll draw or cut it out using Autodesk Fusion 360. And so there's our sentence. That's the one I want to make a subclip of. You just select, highlight, and drag. And then the button that we're all familiar with now, this little icon, create a subclip, hit that. We're going to call this one. Fusion 360, not to be confused with DaVinci Resolve Fusion, hit Create. We can close this, and we can have this this uh, this Fusion 360 clip as its own individual clip. We can even turn on our audio clip waveforms if you want to see those. So to when I cut it out using Autodesk Fusion 360. So there's our subclip. It can be edited to any timeline or cut it out using Autodesk Fusion 360. And sometimes it does cut it a little bit short. So if you needed to extend the subclip because we didn't have extend subclips turned on, if you right click on it, you can go to edit subclip and turn on full clip extents update. And what this has just done is now we can extend that handle a little bit longer in case it trimmed it up a little bit too much. Is I'll draw or cut it out using Autodesk Fusion 360. Hey. Thank you so much for being here and learning with me today. Let me know down in the comments what you want to learn in DaVinci Resolve this year. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.